The spike in COVID-19 cases has prompted more questions for doctors on how the virus spreads. Now for more on why doctors are finding the fight against COVID-19 so challenging, we're joined now by Dr. John Conley. He's an infectious disease specialist who attended the World Health Organization meetings in Geneva. Dr. Conley joins us now from Calgary. Sir, thank you for making time for us. Let's begin with your assessment from those meetings at the World Health Organization. What are the most critical factors in fighting COVID-19? The meeting uh, developed uh, eight immediate actions uh, from looking at uh, items to provide um, rapid diagnostic tests to looking at what therapies might be available, what new treatments might be available, what is the animal reservoir, uh, what are the most effective uh, protective equipment, and then how do we best communicate that. So those are the immediate uh, goals that have been set from the meeting. And at this stage, what do we know about this virus? How did it come to be? What, how did it become what it is now? And what is it mutating into? Do we have a sense of any of that? We do know from published material that the uh, virus is very similar to a, an Asian bat coronavirus. So in that respect, it's not so different from uh, coronavirus uh, that caused SARS and the one that caused the Middle East respiratory uh, disease. Uh, both of which had origins in bat populations. And one of the questions is, was there an intermediate animal vector, uh, such as the Asian anteater, much like the camel was the intermediate vector in, in the Middle East? At this stage, what are the biggest challenges in fighting this virus? I think the biggest challenge is the efficiency of transmission. It's somewhat different than uh, SARS and MERS coronavirus in that we have a more efficient means of transmission. And that appears to be uh, one of the difficulties. And combine that with the fact that there was a, a large number of people who were gathered in Wuhan and China and Hubei province at the time, because it was during the holiday period, there was the ability for it to be able to uh, transmit to secondary and tertiary cases. And uh, we saw that occurring and then it spread from there. You've mentioned China, of course, it is the epicenter of where uh, the virus popped up, where it is spreading, where the most cases and fatalities are. But yet there still remains quite a bit of skepticism about the information coming out from China, including some very top U.S. officials within the uh, White House administration expressing concern that maybe China isn't being as forthright as it should. Maybe they're not taking the necessary steps they need to take. What's your assessment of how China is communicating about this and handling the problem? You know, from my perspective, there are a number of people who video linked in. There were also some Chinese colleagues who attended the meeting in Geneva. And from my perspective, they're being relatively forthright. I do know uh, a number of colleagues who are with the Chinese uh, Centers for Disease Control, and they're good scientists. So from that perspective, uh, I believe that the information that we're getting uh, should be relatively reliable. So what are the next steps that, I guess, globally are, are being undertaken to fight this virus? The next steps are to be able to develop uh, milestones and timelines with specific research questions to be able to try and answer some of the gaps that uh, were identified at this uh, global summit meeting that was held in Geneva recently. And we expect to see those uh, towards the end of the month. There's active work going on now. I've been on the email uh, already this morning with my colleagues uh, on my section to be able to look at mapping out the research agenda. You know, sir, the head of the World Health Organization made an interesting comment at that summit that millions, potentially billions of dollars are spent by governments around the world every year to fight terrorism. And yet the spread of the next major pandemic could wipe out so many more people, could be so much more lethal and so much more devastating economically and politically. So from your perspective, what is it going to take to get governments to make this a top priority? I think we're seeing some of that occurring already. There's been investments from a number of countries, the Belinda and uh, Bill Gates uh, Foundation, and uh, there's expressions of interest from other governments. So hopefully there'll be some solidarity and, solidarity and consolidation of uh, resources that will come forward to be able to uh, provide the necessary funding to uh, move the agenda forward. And based on what you're seeing now, this is the final question, um, in terms of the numbers, the direction they're headed in, are you optimistic about this? Is it coming under control or is, there a, is it going to get a lot worse before we get a handle on it? 
At this point, I would say I would be cautiously optimistic. We've had a couple of days of reduced numbers of case counts. I know last week that occurred and people were predicting the end of this by April and then suddenly there was a jump. So I think what we need to see is consistent reduction over many, many days in the number of new cases that are occurring. But cautious optimism would be the word I would say at this point. Okay, sir, let's go with that. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Conley. You're welcome.